morning I had the beautiful surprise blessing uh, a couple coming after mass holding their beautiful newborn baby girl. Kalia was born and only 10 days old. Today was her first mass. Aww. It was so beautiful. They asked for a little blessing and uh, as we're uh, just praying over Kalia, everybody around the end of the, at the back of the church just stopped and were in awe. How precious, how special this little life that is being prayed for. What a beautiful blessing we have in our own lives. Our families are so integral to life. This is the message that we have in our scriptures today. Our first reading presents to us the first time in history we hear about the blame game. After eating the fruit, Adam, it comes, God realizes that Adam has eaten of the fruit of the tree of good and evil. Adam says, oh, 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 it wasn't me, it's not my fault, not my fault. It was Eve. Eve is the culprit. And Eve, she says, oh God, you know, it really was not me, it was for that servant. He's the real reason. In all of this passing on of the guilt, of the blame, it is to be noted that there were still consequences for the actions that happened. For Adam and for Eve, we are still feeling the consequences of what our human mother and father, grandmother, grandfather, have set for us. This connection that we have as human beings, it shows how visceral we have, are connected. Our families are connected. When we talk about our bloodlines and we have this, this, this loyalty to be able to take care of each other, to stand up for each other, this is what we're speaking about. Why we feel this draw to be connected is deeper. It's thicker than blood. But here we have, in the good, but also in the bad, that we are connected all to each other. This notion of family, here we have in our gospel today, um, I'm just going to focus on two different ways that God is presenting to us opportunities for us to show up for our families. The Gospel starts off by Jesus going back home. When he started his public ministry, he wasn't in his hometown of Bethlehem or of Nazareth. So when he goes home with his disciples, there's a buzz around, right? All the people want to go and see what is happening. Are these stories true? Is Jesus really casting out demons and doing these big, grand, powerful things? How could this be? This is Jesus, the same young man that we've known for 30 years, is doing these things marvelous things. There's a whole crowd around Jesus to the point in the gospel it says he doesn't even have space or time to eat. He's not tending to his own physical needs because he's teaching, he's showing, he's showing up for people. Hmm. In our own lives, how are we called to show up for our people? What does that look like? Who are our people? In the Gospel story, at first glance, it may seem 
that Jesus, or that Mary and the brothers and sisters, this is a way of saying his community, his family, in his hometown, they might be a little concerned about Jesus, right? Hearing these stories, they might want to say, check in on Jesus, say, what's going on? What is happening? It's not the original, it's not only the thought of this guy must be crazy. What is he doing? He's creating a scandal. That might have been what their concern was. It doesn't say in the gospel specifically what their reasoning is. As every mother here knows, if she knows her son isn't eating, I'm pretty sure her concern to get to her son to make sure that he has what he needs. So it's not only for the scandal, but it's to take care of their own. Jesus, in his infinite wisdom, is able to take this opportunity to invite us to learn about who is our family. When Jesus says, the one that is my brother, my sister, my mother is the one that follows my will, the one that believes in me. This is right after he's saying, anything on this planet, any sin that you can conjure up or you can commit, God's love is so big that it can be forgiven. The one thing that is not forgivable is to not believe in God. These are powerful, powerful teachings. To go from that to say, those that believe in me are my brothers, my sisters. Who are the ones that believe in me? The ones right here in front of me. He's not negating his actual mother and his family and his community that is outside waiting to get in to see him. Who else on this planet, throughout all of the time and examples in history, who else other than our blessed mother has done everything in her life to follow the will of, of, of God? So she is certainly his mother. So much so that she becomes our mother. In the different ways that Jesus is challenging us to think about family, of course we are called to be there, to show up for our loved ones. For our, if we're married, called to take care of our spouses, to build each other up. If we're parents, to take care of our children. In that incumbent sacrifice, that is also acts of love. But our families slowly, slowly grow as we think about it more and more. Who are we called to reach out to? Who are we called to love? Of? This is exactly why we are able to think in these terms. Here we are gathered as a family. How can we call each other family? We don't have this blood, the same genetic code running through each of us. We can do it by the power of his love. We can do it by sharing in this sacrifice of his very body, his very blood, becoming a part of my body and a part of your body. This is how we are connected in such a strong visceral, profound, intimate, grand, powerful way. For a house that is divided will certainly fail. We call and we reach out and we beg God to unite us on so many different levels, to forgive us of our sins, personally, to get right with God, to be on that path to do His will. And as each person does that, we see each other and we recognize our Lord in each other to say, that is my brother, that is my 
sister. We not only share in that same sacrifice, that same baptismal water, that beautiful sacrament that we have in baptism, but we renew that faith and we, re and we nourish ourselves in this sacrifice here in the altar. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. Our families. This gift that God gives us Although often I'm sure it may feel like a chore, it may feel like a work, this is our calling. This is how we are to honor this beautiful, wonderful gift that God has given us. <laughs>